Any student volunteer to want to work on the electrical power system? Anybody from the electrical department? Any names? Huh? Is it louder, louder. Brinda. Here. Bhavya. Brinda and Bhavya. So we have uh, D-R-I, U, <coughs> Bhavya, okay. who else? Vishnu or the So we don't have to worry about the design of the EPS, it will be done for sure. Nihal. Madhukar. Govil. Komal Raj. Sanjay. Anybody else who wants to work? Yes. Mahesh. Mahesh. Anybody else? Any more students who want to work on ETS? All right. That's a good team. That's a really nice team. So you guys are going to take as part of the this course. Uh, you're going to do a, an EPS design report, okay? And uh, as part of the report, um, I'll give you a template of the report, what you need to do. Uh, you need to design your EPS according to the mission we are working on, all right? So if you look at the EPS, uh, this is a typical layout, um, hardware and interface. What you need to do is, Understand understand this diagram. Is everybody able to see this? Yes. Is it legible yes. from back there? Okay. So this is the, the electrical, sorry, the uh, solar cells and solar panels. Okay. Now you're going to see this is for uh, for the satellite I worked on. Uh, what you're seeing here is each phase. So we were working on a on a Pico class CubeSat, a 1U CubeSat. The form factor of 1U CubeSat is 10 by 10 by 10, by 10, by 10 right? And each phase is about 10 by 10, right? So here you're looking at, so look at this. This X, there are two phases on the X axis, correct? There are two phases on X, Y, and Z axis. Each phase had two cells connected in series, and the two faces were connected in parallel. Okay, and we do that. If I say that at any given point, at any given time, uh, at any given point in the orbit, only one of the faces is going to face the sun. Is that a true statement? Invariably, the opposite face is not going to face the sun. So the opposite face is going to be in, in darkness, in shadow. Okay. So that is the reason you just between the two faces, x x uh, minus s x and positive x, you have one DCR. DCR is battery charge regulator. Okay. These are connected to the battery charge regulator. Only one DCR. At any given point of time, only one of these phases is going to be producing electric energy. Okay. So you see the design. Is, is this design? Um, is this design making sense? Yes. Two solar cells on each panel. The yellow thing is a panel. The white thing are solar cells. Okay. Solar cells are in that shape. Typically, when you buy solar cells uh, from I think ISRO will supply solar cells if we go for the mission. 
those are in that shape. We have to manufacture our panels. We have to design and develop our own panels. The solar cells will be given by ISRO. And then what we do is we use space glue to bound the solar cells onto the panels. Now keep in mind, we also have to do the electrical connections for solar cells, right? So typically they're going to be two leads, right? If you see this negative, how do you connect something in series? Positive, positive to negative will be series. Positive, positive will be parallel. So you see this is negative is connected to positive, right? And the positive, these two are connected to positive, positives are connected here. That is that is what makes it parallel. Okay. So you're going to look at uh, a design like this. You you can do your own EPS schematic. All right. The, the team which is going to work on the design report for EPS, you can do an EPS schematic. So there are three BCRs where um, when I was showing you the, the, all of you saw the kit, right? You saw the demo of the kit. When the kit, when I showed you the panel, the panel was had a connector on the power supply board, right? And just beside that connector, there was a regulator. I, I was pointing to the regulator, right? The black regulator, the surface <coughs> on chip. That is this BCR. Got it? This design, we may not do this design. Okay, we will probably just, uh, for this mission, based on what, uh, what I get a feedback from administration, we can just go ahead and purchase this commercial off the shelf. This entire, the blue thing, the blue thing is the electrical power, system, power uh, distribution system. You saw the power distribution board? Yes, yes. Right? So this is the power distribution board. And there are three VCRs. Since that is not a flight board, there's only one VCR there. Okay, but typically on uh, a flight power distribution board, you have three connectors, okay? And then all uh, just beside those connectors you have DCRs. All right. Now you see once the BCR, this goes to the battery bus. This is the battery bus. You understand battery bus? So battery bus is simply the positive end, the ground leads to which go to the Okay. So you see that this is typically, or this is directly responsible for charging the batteries. Okay, and you have, you understand the difference between a battery and a cell? A group of cells makes a battery. Right. So again, just like that, uh, we had two cells in the battery, and those two cells were connected in series. Now this, you could again buy this. Uh, we are not going to design or develop our own batteries. We're going to buy commercial off-the-shelf <laughs> batteries. Okay. There has to be a battery monitoring circuit. Why do we need a battery monitoring circuit? <laughs> Over voltage protection, undercurrent protection. So you, it is very typical of uh, um, any of the electronic devices you use. You use your laptop, you use your uh, cell phone or any of your iPads, all have that battery monitoring circuit. So once the battery is charged, it cuts off, cuts off the charging. The charging. Okay. So we need that circuit. And we will probably go with let's say lithium poly or uh, lithium. Lithium poly is, is the most uh, uh, most common these days for space applications. Um, Lithium poly, or you could think about lithium ion, but lithium poly is more common. Okay. And, and then is connected from power bus to the battery. Power bus to the battery. So what we're going to see is, um, I'll show you some, uh, a commercial off-the-shelf battery board and um, the power distribution board. I'll show you. 
Now, what you're going to see is this power distribution board has its own. What is this? Microcontroller, right? It all it has its own microprocessor. Now, these days, as I told you uh, before, these microprocessors are so small and so efficient. You can have them typically on any system to make it more autonomous. So this system is monitoring uh, the battery, all the battery health. It is monitoring the temperatures of the solar cells or solar panels, the voltages, currents of, uh, of uh, the solar cells. It is monitoring the voltage and current of the battery. Right? All that information, all that uh, smartness is through this PIC microcontroller. Okay? There is this PIC microcontroller as part of the power distribution board. And what you have so this battery bus, it goes in, okay, and it supplies, it gets supplied here. There are voltage regulators. You saw voltage regulators, right, on that processor board. These are standard voltage regulators, the 5 volt bus and the 3.3 volt. Okay. You also have uh, a battery bus coming here. If one of these boards has its own regulator, then you can just supply the battery bus and let it regulate whatever voltage it wants to regulate. Okay. You understand these systems? This is the onboard computer or the CDH system. Okay, CDH is onboard computer plus software. The power bus, uh, electrical power system is uh, responsible for supplying power to the onboard computer. And it is responsible for supplying power to the attitude determination and control system. So this is the ACS, this is the ADS. So then when you combine this, you get ADCS. All right. And then you have a radio on board, right? You supply the uh, supply power to the communications board. Uh, what else are we supplying power to? In what is missing here? Payload. Payload is missing. So payload is missing, and uh, you have we have two payloads, right? One is the deorbiting system, and the other is a camera, right? So the power system will be responsible for uh, supplying power to that to those two systems, the payload one and payload two. Yes, so that's a very good question. So what we'll have is um, there will be switches on each of these boards, and you can power on and off each of these boards using those switches. So the payload, this thing, there'll be a switch there which will control the power supply. And those switches could be controlled by CDH. Exactly. That's wonderful. So the CDH could be used to control the switches. Turn on the switch, turn off the switch. It will be a soft switch. Every time you send a command, the command is received by the onboard radio. The onboard radio will send that signal to CDH. If CDH will power on that switch, <coughs> the EPS will, the connection is already made. It will just. Power will be there, like. Yes. Look, it will be connected. The hardware connection will be there. Just as powering on the switch and switch off. That is what will be done. Okay. So look at some of the important aspects here. Okay. Although you will choose this or you will buy this off the shelf, you have to make sure. What are the what are the tasks of the EPS uh, team? Okay, one we have to design our own panels. Okay, so I'll talk about panels a little bit.
All right, so this is, uh, uh, yeah, this is the design of the panel. We have to do this ourselves. Uh, what you're seeing here, this is the top surface. If this is a multi-layer panel. This is a PCB, multifunctional PCB panel. Okay, it is made up of multiple layers. Uh, it could be two layer, four layer. At least we'll we'll need at least two layers, right? So what you're going to see is the top layer has provision for mounting the solar cells, right? And these connections are the electric connections. These leads are the electric leads, which will connect to the back, right? Quite a few layers have these uh, traces of magnetic coil. Uh, we need not use these in our mission because we are planning to use talkers. Separately, we'll have magnet talkers. If we don't have magnet talkers, what we could have done is uh, embed traces inside these panels. And when you pass electricity through them, what happens? They'll act like a magnet and then they'll help in stabilizing the satellite. This will take, it was our experience that this, although this is a nice idea, it will take a lot of time to uh, stabilize. And the other problem with this is, it won't short. It will, it will be fine. Power requirement. Power requirement is, uh, power requirement itself is not, you cannot really pass a whole lot of power because it starts to get heated up pretty soon. Because there is no circulation or there is no, these are traces on top of the other, right? It cannot even radiate heat. So what happens is if you have these traces and you start passing electricity, they get heated up. Okay, and once they get heated up, what happens? This, the, the magnetic field is a function of what? Magnetic field is a function of number of turns and the current flowing through the turns, right? So the number of turns are not going to change. You can only vary the, can you really vary the current? No. What, you can vary the voltage, right? You can vary, you can vary the voltage and whatever the resistance, depending on what resistance, the current will be varied. Now what happens if you, current will decrease. If, if these coils start heating up, the resistance will increase, increase and then the okay. current will drop. If once the current drops, the field will drop. So pretty soon, we notice that very soon, the in a very short uh, time, these will start getting heated up. Okay. So the current drops significantly and uh, we don't get a lot of field out of that. This is the with the lower size satellite. Maybe if it is bigger, mm -hmm. you can adapt, uh, you know, you need uh, radius. Right. So we could also look at, you see these, these are another kind of panel, okay. So what you have seen here is, these are composite match panels, glass fiber composite. You know the composite laying process, how do you, how do you fabricate composite uh, material? Wet layer technique. See, this is a typical wet layer technique. This is a coil. Okay, it's a coil which is it. It is not traces, but something which is wound manually. You can use uh, enamel coated. The same wire you're going to use for the talkers, you use that to wind it in the form of a surface. Okay. And you can embed these in between the composite layers. You see what I'm saying? So that way, uh, you can actually get a nice, you really need a nice smooth surface on one side. The other side, you don't really worry about 
whether you get a smooth surface or not. Right? So you could do this. However, we have to figure out a very nice, uh, a very professional way of doing this. If we don't do a professional job, this looks, this will look very sloppy, and plus, it may be a, uh, a candidate for failure. Okay. And then it may also give capacitive effect because if the beads are open and then uh, right, right. So this is the other this thing. You can explore this. You can explore this as just a project. This is a you have to learn uh, composite <coughs> fabrication process, and especially uh, a lot of the systems these days are designed using composite. So you can learn this as an option, and then look at the PCB panels as well. PCBs, you know what PCBs are? PCBs are also Composites, okay. PCB panels are nothing but composites, but a machine is used to. They are multiple layers, and they the same process is adopted. Just that the machine will compress it and keep whatever uh, human does. The machine does it, and you get a nice finish out of PCB. Okay. So you can look at this design as well. You can explore this design, and you see this. This is a space grade epoxy we talked about. Alright? So the red thing is a space grade epoxy, but this is a, a stencil. So you don't want to just you know apply uh, epoxy throughout. You just use a stencil wherever you want. This is a paper cut stencil. You apply epoxy and it applies only to that part. And you can stick the solar cell on that. Any questions on these? What's the mount the solar cells on the onto the um, panel. Suppose if we are uh, trying to build this, mm -hmm. what are the parameters we should be looking at? The material component. You have to look at uh, first figure out how you can coil the magnetar. Uh, the dimensions of the wire play a critical role. The thicker the wire, the better you're going to put. Again, you will compromise on the number of terms. Uh, like a 30 gauge, uh, this thing could, could give you a decent coil. <coughs> Charge is there. Two hours is there. Really, what I mean. Solar cells um, will be close to pretty close to 100 degree. Yeah. Yeah. Not normal solar cells, what we have seen. Yes, yes. We may not be able to use those. So when when we get something from ISRO, those will be space grade solar cells. So what they yes. We have to look at the threshold level of the. Yes, yes. So you uh, that is actually. Solar cells and testing the solar cells is going to be challenging 
because you're going to get very limited number of solar cells and you have to manage the entire, for example, you could buy, these are not space grade solar cells, these are just uh, terrestrial solar cells. You can do some level of testing, but again, those will not give you the exact uh, rating, whatever you're looking at. These will be much less efficient. Um, what you can do is, uh, what they do is, so they, the bigger satellites, when they mount these solar cells, they cut the edges. And those edges are given to us for, <laughs> for our satellites. And those are pretty good enough when you're really in space grade solar cells, but uh, we have to manage it. So when we go, we can say, sir, you know, give me two more. <laughs> and then use that too. Uh, if you have even one panel um, nicely prepared with space grade solar cells. That can be placed towards the sun or remaining uh, whatever we have done. One extra panel, I mean, uh, so you have one panel which will be used for testing and we have to take extreme care when to test that panel. We could do that. We need two extra solar cells. So when we got our solar cells, I think we got uh, um, 14, 14, so we needed about 12 solar cells. We got about 14 solar cells, so only two extra. We don't get an entire set. The solar cells are so expensive. <laughs> so we have to just prepare one panel um, with those extra two solar cells. They charge for them. They charge for them. You mean they just... Right. The solar, uh, ISRO may not charge. So this is one of the uh, yeah, complements on this. So they'll give you a launch plus they'll give you a solar cell and they'll give you a facility to test these. Okay. These panels, whatever we are going to know, mm -hmm. Mm. Solar cells, mm. they are also exposed to 100 degrees. Yes, so those would be fine. Those would be mostly fine if you design PCB panels. You can simply, what you could do is if you get access to, so what we did was we had a, a thermo vacuum chamber in our uh, facility in our university. So whatever we got, we just threw it in the thermo vacuum chamber and then. Yeah, you just do a, a very simple test, a mass loss. You figure out what is the mass, you weigh the system before it goes into the thermo vacuum. Weigh it after. If the mass loss is within certain, then we'll assume that it's not a PCBs are fine, actually. PCBs are very, uh, very sturdy and will, will, not, uh, will not have an issue when they go into space. The circuits will have an issue. The chips, ICs will have, may have an issue. So here you're going to see this temperature sensor. Okay. Now you see these here. So this is the this is the inside surface. Okay. And typically what you have is there's a big connector here. And everything that is on the top. So what you're going to see here is do you see a uh, provision for a for temperature sensor there? Yes. So that is a temperature sensor. In addition to that temperature sensor, we'll need something either here or there, a sun sensor. We'll put a sun sensor there, right? One, this thing will be the temperature sensor and one corner will be the sun sensor. So there will be six sun sensors on the six faces. You have to figure out to get a connector at the back using VLs. You, you, you saw what VLs are. I showed you the other day what VLs are. So you, you get those traces through and through and have a, uh, make a connector here so that you can very conveniently connect those connectors to the... So for example, the temperature sensor will be connected to the EPS board. Okay, temperature sensor, the solar cells, uh, all those will be connected to the EPS. 
where will the sun sensor be connected to? Oriented. ADCS board. So the ADCS board, uh, you'll have, you'll probably have your own ADCS board, okay, ADCS computer. So those will be connected to the ADCS board. In that, in that case, what you need to do is make provision for two separate connectors. One connector will go to APS board. The other connector will go to ADCS board. Now, what else do you need? One of the PCs, PCBs will also have a. What is the other thing we are missing? The PCBs will have provision for mounting the camera as well. The camera has to come out of the camera lens has to come out of this PCB, right? And uh, you may not mount the entire camera there, but you have to make a provision for. A camera plus a maybe a filter, right? You need you may need filter because uh, these cameras may saturate easily when in uh, when in space. So you need a fill. You need to design one of the PCBs with a small hole. So you may miss. Uh, if you're looking at a so we that if you're looking at a two ten by twenty side, the camera will be on the ten by twenty side, right? Everybody remembers the configuration. The relative orientation. Tell me the relative orientation again. 10 by 10 by 20, right? So where is your uh, drag sensor? This way is a drag sensor. This side is the camera. So you have a camera here. You can put it in the center. This side are the solar cells. So if you have a deployable solar cell. You can look at that. I think one of you promised me to look at, uh, promised me that you're going to look at the deployable. Who said that? Yes. So he's going to look at uh, how to design a simple mechanism. So what we're thinking of is you have the two uh, 10 by 20, right? This is also 10 by 20. Now if you figure out a way to open just one of these. Now keep in mind you cannot open this. Why can't you open this? The drag seal is there. The drag uh, sensor is going to be there. The drag chute is going to be there. So think about opening just this side. This will give you what's the total size of the panel if you get this? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 by 20. So you can have instead of uh, four of these cells, you'll have eight of these cells. So have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you're going to produce quite a bit of power if you can maintain that orientation. The challenge is to maintain that orientation. Okay, and once you have that, where will your camera be? On this side. All right. So you have to design a panel on this side with a camera provision, at least a hole through which the camera can project. And where will the camera be connected to? CDS. So that is your PCB design. So you're going to do a PCB design. You look into PCB design. You can take the help of uh, faculty members. It's it's not it's relatively easy if you know to use explore uh, PCB design tools. Are you taught any of the PCB design tools? So you can look at some of the easy PCB design tools. It's it's not challenging at all. Uh, you just need to know how to route the the wiring. Okay, it, it's it'll be a very simple. Uh, so these are the uh, these are how the solar cells will look at. Um, each of these solar cells is capable of producing up to a watt of power. Okay, so if you have two of them in series, you'll get about two watts. Now there is something called on orbit average power, OAP. What is that? What is happening in orbit? It's keep on moving. It's 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 moving. So there is there is sun time and then there is Shadow. eclipse time. We call it the eclipse time. So when it is an eclipse time, is it producing any power? No. Right? So the average on orbit average power is 1.5 watts. 
for each one new site. Okay. So how many one new sites are we going to have? Are we thinking of having two or six? Right. Sorry, four. So we have. Uh, if we have four, or if we have two panels, right? In the deployed state, we'll have four of these. So we can produce up to six watts of on average on average or on average. Okay. Now, this is the power budget we had, okay. and this power budget is simply the power budget of each subsystem. All right. So you can see that the power budget for what is the total power budget here? About five and a half watts, right? And how much power are we produ producing? No, 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 for this mission. Two watts. Two watts, right? At max, two watts. But the on orbit average power is just 1.5 watts. So, how are we going to. How are we going to manage that? The power requirement for the satellite is 5.5 watts. But the satellite is only generating 1.5 watts. Huh? On and off. Right. So what we do is we do something called duty cycling. All right. So duty cycling is this is duty cycling. All right. So look at uh, what are these? You identify those. Those are the operating modes. We discussed about operating modes. Remember? Yes. Uh, so the safe fold operating mode is we discussed the power budget for power up, power up and deploy and the safe fold operating mode, right? So if you look at the safe fold operating mode, what is the power consumption of safe fold operating mode? 160 milliwatts, right? So when 160 milliwatts power is being consumed, how much is being produced? 1.5. How much? How much is is remaining? Close to 1.3 watts, right? Or 1.34 watts. Okay. So if you, that 1.3 watts is going to go into the battery. That's, that that extra power which is being generated will go into the battery and it will charge the battery. Right. So if you look at this is a power positive operating mode. This is a power positive operating mode. This is a power positive operating. Mode. This is a power positive operating. Only this is a power negative. The amount of power being generated is less than the amount of power that is going to be get consumed during this operating mode. And what is this operating mode? This is the mission mode. In this satellite, this was the mission mode. This mission, this particular mode consumed about 4 watts of power. And how did we manage that? We managed it using a we managed it using one of these batteries. Okay. So the battery capacity uh, was about 10 watt hours. The one we selected was about 10 watt hours. For how long can I run the run this um, when completely charged? How much? For how long can I run this? Two and a half hours. Now take into consideration. At that time, the solar cell is let's say producing 1.5 watts. Okay. So if you uh, add that power as well, you could run it close to three hours. So that is how you need to figure out how to operate. So this is the duty cycling aspect of it. So you see every component that is going to consume power is listed here. How many of those components, the maximum power in milliwatts, um, all that is listed here. Okay. And then what you do is you simply 
during say fold, you see this is not operational, this is not operational, this is not operational. The TI DSP may be operational. So it is uh, consuming about this is the processor, this is the uh, ADCS computer, the attitude computer. Everybody understands TI DSP, what I mean by this? The DSP processing from Texas Instruments. And uh, none of these are operating, right? In our case, the IMU may be operational, right? Um, the sun sensors, this is the, the uh, TI FM430 uh, computer. The flash is operating, the 12 bit ADC. So all these, you can, you can do, the team responsible for designing the electrical power system has to get the list of all the components from various teams. So you need to get in touch with the CDH to figure out what is the computer being used, what kind of storage, storage, right? You understand storage? So there's a flash storage on there, and then there's whatever additional this uh, CDH team is using. You have to figure out and how much power those are consuming. You, you'll be able to do something like this on your own, the EPS team, the max power budget and uh, operating mode power budget and justify how we can successfully uh, execute the mission. You can do that? Yes. Yeah? Alright. Why is it operational in the safe mode mode? Or just a general question, why you need DSP? So there is, a, if you look at uh, these microprocessors or microcontrollers, you can typically divide them into two, things, two types. One is good for interfacing, interfacing with, with hardware. Okay. One is a very powerful map processor. You understand? So when you do attitude, if you have an attitude computer, I told you how many how many algorithms, how many control laws you need to execute, right? So all those control laws are nothing but mathematics, right? So you need a math processor. TIDSP is a very powerful math processor. So that is the reason we have a TIDSP as part of these ADCS, which has all the algorithm implemented on it. Right. So whenever uh, the ADCS operation is happening, the, it will execute all the math and it will, uh, it will just pass on whatever information is needed to the onboard computer. Right. Any questions? No, I think I have... So you want to identify the tasks for the EPS team? Okay, let's do that, okay. So let me switch this off. Who's going to be? Who's going to take the lead for making sure the tasks are done? Faculty member. Faculty member. Okay. Let me list. Okay. So that's a good idea. So what we're going to do is, since there are so many of you all, we'll split into two groups. Each group will do the same thing. Because there are not many tasks involved, each group will do the same thing. You won't, uh, and then you can cross-check. But each team, each group will have, so there are eight people, right? 
Can I split it this way? This is team one. This is This is okay. That's fine. Who's going to lead this team? <laughs> I'm the big force. <laughs> Let me just. Vishnu, what's your order? So this is okay. You can lead the team. You can take the lead. I mean, it's it's, it's a it's a wonderful opportunity. Okay. So uh, Vishnu was on this one, team lead for team one. This one? Maheshwari, let's get uh, a lady leader. Maheshwari will lead this team. Okay? You'll make sure, you'll tell all of them that they need to be on track. Okay? You have the support of all the faculty members. Maheshwari will leave this group, okay? So you have to compete with each other in a healthy way. And let's see who who, uh, who, gives, who, who produces a, a better report. Right? So tasks are... You have a CDH team. You have a comms team, and you have a right PDH team. Have a Team. You need to communicate with all of these teams and figure out the identify the component and one you need to do the Maximum power budget is subsystem based. So whatever I showed you, do a maximum power budget for that subsystem. All right. And two, Operating mode part. Two, you need to do a functional schematic of PPS. Give me a wiring diagram. This is different and this is different. When you do the wiring diagram, you practic practically have to identify every electrical and communication bus. I'll give you uh, whatever I have, I'll give you that. 
Okay? But you need to do a wiring diagram to show me the right. So electrically how everything is connected. Have the structure of the different subsystems connected, then I can think of where Right. So we'll 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 look at. So most of the let's let's look at the PC one zero four standard. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Right. But outside of that. Yes. For all those things, I need the structural diagram. Sure. So that I can lay the connection wires. Yes, yes. So that we'll discuss and make sure we have the structure. I'll also give you some idea of what the structure is. We'll have a sit down discussion and make sure how this is discussion based. So try to try to prepare. A basic wiring diagram to show that how everything is connected, electrically connected. We'll have there are two interfaces. What are the two interfaces we talked about? Mechanical interface and electrical interface. So this wiring diagram will tell us the electrical interface between every sub every component of the satellite. Okay. I'm not looking at wiring diagram of uh, Components inside the board. So if it's a board, then the wiring interface is simply this. Between two boards, what is the wiring interface? PC104. I'm not looking at the internal connections of each board. Across subsystems, if there is anything, for example, there will be a connector coming from the temperature sensor, solar panels. All those are external to this, right? So you can indicate this plus whatever externally. Are being connected to what? That is what the wiring diagram will help. What the wiring diagram will help is uh, when we come to assembly, or we have to make sure there are enough number of ports, communication ports, enough number of the bus is able to carry the amount of current we want it to carry. Okay. And when we do the uh, when you do the power budget. Do the bus budget as well. You understand bus budget? Bus budget. You understand what is bus budget? Connections. Connections. There are there are going to be five volt regulators, three point three volt regulators, and so what is the amount of power which is going through that? How many connectors? How many systems are connected on that bus? <laughs> connect on that, and how, what is the power consumption on that bus? So when we choose a regulator, we have to make sure regulator is capable of supplying that kind of power. What else do you want to do? You want to you you, you have a, a schematic, functional schematic. So this is the schematic and wiring diagram. So this wiring diagram. Will also tell should also tell me what is the communication interface I'm going to write this one is uh, communication interface between EPS and this is very critical. Okay, so we need to figure that out. The fourth one is design of
multifunctional PCB panel. This is going to be a, and I don't expect very detailed, uh, you can take, probably take a semester worth of effort. I need some, some, um, at least a first draft by this month end. Is that feasible? A first draft of this. I don't need a lot of detail. For example, this one, you could simply uh, show me different layers. Use some kind of uh, drawing software where you can uh, draw these and show me where are the components situated, how you're going to connect, describe that. Okay. And you take another semester worth, worth of time to go and do the actual PCB design. Is that okay? Is that reasonable? Can I elaborate? So design of multifunctional PCB panels. So we are looking at mounting solar cells. You have to figure that out. The electrical connection and the mechanical interface. Electrical connection in the sense. Uh, yes. So we are going to use epoxy. And uh, you don't really have to, so what I showed you, there was a provision for mounting them. In the sense, there was, uh, there was a patch there which showed where to mount them. That is not ne ne uh, really necessary. What you could do is, you could give a very smooth surface, but have, have the leads. You need at least four leads for the solar cells solar cells to, to solder. The electrical interface, you have to solder them on there. Uh, and you have to have a, uh, a trace or a PCB, what do you call it? The PCB uh, print for temperature sensor. And PCB print if, if read for the sun sensor. If you're going to mount the sun sensor there, without doing a through and through mounting. If it's a through and through mounting, for example, the camera is a through and through mounting, right? You don't need a trace to mount it. You, if it's a surface mount chip, like a temperature sensor, you need to identify a trace, like print or uh, how you're going to mount it. Okay. So that is what this design of PCB. And at the back, uh, you have to have a trace for the print for connectors. What kind of connector you are going to use, and what is the uh, what is the what is the print of that? The surface mount uh, this thing. Right? So all those have to be part of this. It's actually not uh, not going to be that challenging. Uh, just have to, if you just sit down and even draw it by hand, then put it onto the a drawing software and then go to the PCB, this thing, it'll be, you can adopt that process to come. In that PCB, we are mounting the solar cell and we have to provide the for connecting and placing the solar uh, sun sensor. Sun sensor mm -hmm. and the temperature sensor. Temperature so sensor will be a surface mounted sensor. Yeah, I got it. Yes. Okay, sun sensors may not be surface mounted. Sun sensor may be, for example, if the sun sensors are big, you just have to make again a, a through and through hole, essentially, and how you're going to mount it. The interface will simply be, so if sun sensor could be something like this. Okay. It will go through and through and it will just be exposed at the surface. The connection will actually come from the inside. Okay. So, uh, uh, what 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 I would uh, I can identify a sun sensor, commercial off the shelf sun sensor, and create a provision to mount that sun sensor on a PC. 
some sense of this is it a tracking system or it is essentially uh, a photodiode kind of a thing yes uh, when the light falls normally it turns mm -hmm. to the direct Yes, so you have six sun sensors on the six faces. It will orient the board. It will not orient, it will tell where the sun is. So accordingly, if it's like, for example, the phase, one of the phases could be perpendicular to the sun's uh, incident light. One of the edges could be perpendicular. Then two faces are facing. The corner could be uh, incident, then three faces. The maximum num number of faces which are going to be facing the sun is three. During that time, all the three will get activated, will bring some voltage. And if you simply take the, the norm of those three voltages, so in one, you know x, y, and z. That is the sun vector. It will simply tell you where the sun is. That can be used for attitude computation. So once you know where the sun is, Relatively, you know where the earth is, for example. So, you like accordingly issue a command saying turn so much from that direction to point. So, look at a sun sensor, a commercial off the shelf sun sensor, and see if you can make provision for that sun sensor on your PC. Some three components I have in, in that PC. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Four components. You have solar cell. Temperature sensor, sun tracker. Sun sensor, yes. You have a one of the PCBs will also have to have a camera. That is two and two. Two and two. But you have to have some kind of hole there. Uh, you you don't want to. So when these PCBs are manufactured, if you just specify the hole, they'll laser cut the hole and give it to you. So instead of you know we trying to do the the hole later. If you just give them that PCB itself, they'll cut it and give it so we can just simply mount it. What is the dimension of the solar cells in that? Solar cell dimensions, uh, uh, you can look up standard dimensions. Uh, I can point you to, uh, so here is one, thing, but I can tell you the dimensions. Here. These days, uh, when we used, they were in the shape of a trapezoid. Uh, I don't know if they're still in the shape of trapezoid. Uh, you can look at what kind of so. So they cover about 60, 70 percent of the area of that 10 by 10. 70 percent. Yeah, around 70 percent of the area. So these are the tasks for electrical power system. Okay. Am I miss? Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. PCB material, I think it's typically glass, glass fiber. The green thing is glass fiber. You could use that material, that material should be fine. Yes, once the PCB is manufactured, you can just before, before itself. The material will sustain. What we want to test is when we are mounting these solar cells, we'll use these epoxy. We have to be very careful when we are applying the epoxy because uh, there might be air bubbles. So once we apply, we have to test it. So that way, you are testing the panel and the the epoxy and the, the process of the solar cells, so everything will be tested. Assembly also will. Assembly you can test. So what you can do is, you want you can do just inspection. Take it, put it in and see if you've seen any damages. The other is do a functional test. Uh, what you can do is test the solar cell, the operation of solar cell, how much voltage they are producing. Put it in and see if they are producing the same voltage. The other is mass loss. There is only permittable mass loss. So if it is within that permittable mass loss, you can, should be fine. You can see for structural damage. Structural damage you can do. PCBs will definitely, uh, yeah, they, they will not have a problem. The, the problem will be with epoxy. The, epoxy. the way you apply this the space epoxy, you have to perfect that process. Because when you are applying, I mean, I'm sure everybody understands this, 
um, when you're applying, you may leave even the minute air bubble. That will try to es try to escape when you put it in a thermal vacuum chamber, and that will escape. That will try to escape through and through this solar cell, and it will just damage. So it will just break. It will. So what happens when you if if you do if you leave an air bubble? That air bubble is at Pressure. Atmospheric pressure, right? And when it goes into space, the space is much less, much less uh, vacuum wise, right? Or much less uh, pressure wise. So it will go down, down, down. So this, whatever that air bubble, that air is trying to escape because it wants to go from higher potential to low potential. And that's when it tries to escape. It will try to escape. What is the path of least resistance? The PCB panels, panel of the solar cell. Solar cell, right? So, so you escape through the, you try to escape the solar cell and to just break the solar cell. Okay. So that is what we need to test when it comes to this. And the other thing you want to test is uh, see if you can procure a, a shaker. A simple shaker is not, not complicated to uh, design. You essentially have a flat surface okay, mounted on a motor. So you just agitate the motor. In our coding lab, we have sieve yes. analysis, no? shakers, yes. shakers. So right. we can make a platform and keep it in the ground. Sure. Any level you can make it sure. We have to look at what frequencies these launch vehicles, uh, we have to look at the frequency profile of the launch vehicles. Match, yeah. If you can input. Uh, and you can design a simple controller where you know supply those uh, those vibration levels and see if if these this stands like this stands and so whatever each component you you design you develop put this put it on the shaker test it and say it is okay and when you uh, so that way you're you're pretty confident that when you actually put them together you can it will sustain the the launch. Anything else that is missing here? Please point to anything else that is missing here. You also need to do a trade study, okay? Uh, I wish. Literature review and trade study. For EPS components. Look at a few missions. Look at a few, a few missions and look at what kind of EPS uh, system was used, has been uh, have been used for these CubeSat missions. So typically, look at uh, one U CubeSats, two U CubeSats, and three U CubeSats. Since we are we are headed in the two U cubes and direction. Look at the trace study relevant to that. Okay, don't look at bigger satellites, but those will not be relevant. So do a tra literature review, review a few articles, and then trace study is just go out there and see what are some of the uh, commercial off-the-shelf systems available. Okay, so you can select those, or you can select. Um, the specifications or what are the salient features of some of the systems out there. Okay. Anything else that is missing? EPS, EPS subsystem, for example, power distribution board, batteries, solar cells. Look at the trade study and look at even for, for panels, look at what panels are there. You can use that to design our panel model. So when you do a train study, you'll know what is out there. So we don't do, we don't, we don't want to design something which is, which does not compare with what is existing, what already is there. It should be somewhat compared, right? That is a reason literature reviews or a train study is important. Think. Yeah, I think for now this is okay. Um, we can, uh, if, the, if, if we come across anything, 
will uh, it will be added to this list. So each team, you can do all of these tasks. You can do all of these tasks. So team one, raise your hand. So you guys can do all of these tasks. Sure. Team two, raise your hand. You can do all of these tasks. So these are about five tasks. Work with your academic advisor or work with your faculty members and uh, report to them. Report to them. At least we have a weekly interaction saying this is what we have done, this is what we need to do. All right? So you get an idea of what you're doing. Any questions? Any questions with regards to the EPS, EPS system? You're good? Yes, yes. So that's what I've said. We'll identify tasks for this team. When we come to this team, again the CDS team has to communicate with all other teams. So we'll do that. We'll definitely do that. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll stop it here, and then we can. When do we want to gather back? Two o'clock. Can we able to finish all the group finalization Other teams. Other teams. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do that. Okay. Sure. One more team. Okay. All right. So let's look at another team. Let's look at ADCS team. So for completeness, I'm just uh, I'm going to write the faculty members as well. I have noted them down. So these are the faculty members who are available. Oh, sorry. Huh? Ananya. 
Anagya. Then in that case, we will discuss the no, no, no. Mm. ADCS mm. before asking the name. Mm. So, as you discuss the task and so yes. on, after the task, it will be processed. So, then we will we'll, we'll meet after. So, we will uh, we will we'll just get whatever uh, whoever has, has raised their hand. What's your name? Ritesh. Ritesh. So, you know, you should interact with each other because what happens is we have to break barriers and it's, it's very important that you, you, did, you just don't be comfortable with whom you are comfortable. When you go out, will all of you join the same company, same branch? May not be feasible, right? So you'll have to work with other people. And that is when you have to become more flexible. Okay, so we'll do team one and team two. So you know your assignments. Team one and team two. And I'll just uh, finish off with uh, the faculty members responsible or who have taken the responsibility. Okay. Uh, we have Again, uh, B. D. Venkatesh Murthy. Faculty members who have taken up the responsibility of ADCS. Okay. 
So there are three faculty members in the uh, in the mechanical engineering department. Uh, I'm looking at Professor Purushottam, uh, Professor Vinit Kumar, and uh, Professor Vijay Kumar Hiremar. Uh, one of you wants to help out with this because I think only. Already we have given. Because the point is already been done. Okay. Among uh, these three, hmm. the vibration aspects will come. Right. Right. So the structure, we what I'm saying is structure. We may not need as much help as three people. So there are uh, you, you can, one more person. We need more. So Kishore Kumar is the instrumentation. We have. Vinit Kumar will help the team. The ADC. He also he also wants to be faculty member. <laughs> he doesn't want to graduate. He wants to be faculty member. What's your name? Ganga. Ganga. Yeah, <laughs> So we'll, uh, you have these faculty members and uh, this is the team. So we have now equal members, both team one and team two. And all we will identify the tasks when we come back from the right. We'll come back at two o'clock. Yes.